That may sound a little bit different because I'm in a new place, but we have announcement time. We have brand new merch by the incredibly talented Nogi Sun to celebrate the Witch Queen. And we are working with Champion again on these designs. We have the Witch Queen herself with Kanji that I'll let you figure out. And it looks just, I mean, it's tremendous. We also have one of her Lucent Brood with insane, I mean, guys, insane attention to detail all over, and I'll let you find out about that one too. Just go to the website that's on screen right now, or click the link in the description. I'd recommend the description, it's a lot easier. Also, we're working with Raid Shadow Legends today, so here we go. Drama, mystery, and trickery. These are the three elements surrounding the subject of today's video. This one will deal with a story of an entire community who has just been tricked, but in multiple ways. One by the narrative of the game Destiny, and one by its very own player base and the game company that provides the game that we all love. This video's story deals with the brand new season ending six player event called Exorcism. And like a lot of videos on the channel recently, this one is a great case study for modern day video games, especially live service games, and especially Destiny 2. So if you aren't subscribed, now is the time to do so. Let's begin. Yo, shout out to Raid Secrets, man. Ladies and gentlemen, there is another emblem available on Twitch right now. All you have to do is make sure your Bungie.net is linked to your Twitch account. And if you want to, you can come by my stream and give two subscriptions. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this and enjoy the rest of this shameless video. Six months can feel like a very long time to wait for some people. Six months is 182 days, 4,380 hours, and yeah, you get the point. Destiny has had its fair share of waiting for delays, with Beyond Light being a delay from September to November, and Shadowkeep even got delayed from September to October. And now with the Witch Queen, we have a delay from November to February. This is three major DLCs in a row with a delay. I say this because it's important to the story of today. Six months may have been a lot of time to build hype for the eventual seasonal mission, Savathun's Exorcism. Now it wasn't abundantly made clear that there was going to be a mission, and it wasn't abundantly made clear how the mission was progressing. The only people to know that a mission was going to happen are those who paid attention to Mara Sav and Savathun's dialogue, teasing that some sort of ritual would happen in time, and that the Witch Queen's sister would come to bring the troops to free her. The progress we didn't know was happening was that this bridge in the background of the Season of the Lost Activity, Asher Alignment, was being built the whole time. Guys, I'm telling you that this bridge was just in the background, under our noses, without anyone catching on for months. Well, I say nobody caught on, except for Reddit user The Teal Mafia, who must have been boy who cried wolfing to get others to notice that there was something up from month to month here. I guess it's a weird piece to notice. There's no lights, no sound in the back there, just a bridge coming together? I wonder who and how they're even building that. But then I remembered that this activity is called Asher Alignment, so I guess a bunch of Techians must have hopped on each other's shoulders and climbed the whole way up. It doesn't make a lot of sense, but the point is simple. We're Bob the building a bridge to the Witch Queen. The mission was all hyped up and ready to go two weeks before the Witch Queen launch, and on the day that the article covering the bridge came out, it looked nearly complete. 
Now, if you're new to Destiny or you just don't know this in general, Destiny has its resets every Tuesday morning for new content, and the bridge was ready to finish. At least so we thought. The bridge was nearly completed in the two weeks before the New Year of Destiny content, and you may think that Destiny players should have been more prepared to be disappointed when it wasn't finished two weeks before, but this is the same community that likes to stare at a bright white floor for six days. <sighs> All for Bastion. No, it did not drop two weeks before, and players probably thought this too because at the end of the previous season, the season of the Splicer, there was a mission two weeks before. But instead, the Big B pulled the sly move of dropping the mission the week I go on a ski trip. While I was falling on my face over and over again, so were players in this mission. Um, th this is this is where the, the title card is supposed to. We interrupt this program to bring you a Raid Shadow Legends ad. Stay tuned until the end for a chance to win Witch Queen. What? What is going on in here? Do a special move. Save it. What are you guys doing? Get out of here. We're playing. We love Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends. Welcome to Raid, a solid free-to-play mobile game with hundreds of champions to choose from and a crazy amount of levels to use them in. My favorite champions are the Madman, the Master Butcher, Hatchet Slinger, Grizzled Jarl, and the Molly Tankard. That's what I really like about this game. It's a turn-based RPG that actually gets difficult as you keep going. Raid has a ton happening this month, with a fresh rotation of the Brutal Hydra boss and a ton of events and tournaments every single day. I won't spoil the rest, so go ahead and check out Raid yourself using the link in the description. New players will even get a free champion, Virgis, 200,000 silver, 1 XP boost, 1 energy refill, and 1 ancient shard, so you can summon an awesome champion as soon as you get in the game. You will find these rewards here in your inbox for the next 30 days. Thank you so much to Raid, and now from me, I want to say that the first 100 of you to DM me on Twitter or Discord with a picture of proof that you downloaded Raid with my link or the QR code on screen, you can get entered in a small pool of people for that precious Witch Queen giveaway. Just take a screenshot of you getting your rewards from my link and send it over. Good luck, and thank you for the support. Now back to the video. Welcome to the mission that tricked the entire Destiny community, and not really in the form of the plot. That part's just implied. The Exorcism mission released on Tuesday, February 15th of 2022. And while Sabathun got us all Valentine's Day cards, the Big B was going to have some trouble getting love from the player base. The accumulation of six months of waiting for the payoff was here, and players started funneling into the mission. The first step was to visit Marasov and get the briefing that the exorcism was commencing. Step two was to go to the Dreaming City and back into Astral Alignment. Now this mission was power level 1270, and at launch with champions and ads everywhere. But hold on to that level thing for a little bit here. We'll, we'll get to that. This activity, much like regular Astral Alignment, was also six player match made. Hold on to that information too, because both of those are very important for the story. Players made their way through and onto a bridge in a very cool sequence of events, with ships flying in to storm the tower. This wasn't the work of Sabathun on the ships, but instead her sister, Zivu Arath, the Hive Goddess of War. This is exactly what players wanted to see for Destiny, that scale of war and combat that gives grounds to the story that we're supposed to care so much about. So this right here, this scale, this war, this giant tower where everybody is going to to fight against each other, it's just great. After players ran through the bridge, hold on to that info too, and to the doors, the Corsairs were there fighting alongside more enemies. But it was when you got through the door that the real mission began. 
Now what I want to know is how they got this big frozen Savathun rock in here. Did they U-Haul her over here or did a bunch of Tekkians just put her on their shoulders? Like, what is happening here? Did she waddle? What, what, what is going on? All right, all jokes aside, once in, Marasov and the Big S go back and forth on some zingers. Doubt is a useful tool, but double-edged. Do not let it lead you astray. Ugh. Leave him be and keep to your promises. Or I'll let him drag you into Zeru Arath's waiting jaws. And then she would swallow you as well. Why must we threaten each other? I am merely clarifying my intent. And eventually, all the ads start coming through. There's a boss fight between the Astral Alignment bosses, and then finally against Zeru Arath's new champion, who still gets on one knee and tries to propose. You know, the other thing I realized about this mission is that we never really got an answer to the 15th wish. I mean, Marasov definitely mentions it, but we never really figure out if Sabathun getting the light breaks the curse in the Dreaming City. Something that I was really hoping for here. I get that Bungie wants the Dreaming City's story to continue a little bit longer, saving it from the DCV. However, I feel like at this point, it really should have ended. Maybe there will be something really cool coming this year. But until then, no 15th wish being solved. And that unsolved mystery still remains a mystery to this day. After killing everything in the room with your team, dodging in and out of St. 14's bubble for that weapons of light buff, and funny enough, the St. 14 helmet buff, which is a great attention to detail, it was time for the ritual. The Tekians float and the cutscene begins. As soon as the cutscene starts, we know that we're in for a... What the hell just happened? Where did the cutscene go? What? Why am I... No reward... What is happening? Someone skipped the cutscene! Oh my... <sighs> Let's talk about it. Before we get to the final cutscene, or for those who just want to go straight there, here's a timestamp, we gotta talk about the bugs of this mission, and events in Destiny having bugs, period. Because this is far from the first time a serious bug has popped up in the series. There's a lot of bugs when it comes to live service games, since without a test server you can't really know what bugs pop up in real time. We've talked about some of them like Niobe Labs having bugs with the symbols. You on it though? Get on it. I'm on it. <laughs> Alright. Alright, we're good, we're good. Three, two, two, two one. one. Here. Go. Just keep, keep going. Just spam, just spam. Just spam. <gasps> oh my god! <laughs> Let's go! We've talked about the hardest raid boss of all time. The door. Just just let it out. Just let it how out does, one. How does nowhere. this Every quest! Stop! There's been server side bugs with the seasonal events. <laughs> and most recently, there was the please slow down mission in the season of the hunt. The second bug is the taken blights. These are supposed to take you to the ascendant realm. However, they aren't so kind. If you attack them with a primary ammo weapon, they can sometimes become immune before you can do enough damage to be teleported. So, exorcism, the bugs, first one up was the bridge. If you went too fast, the encounter didn't work, and it broke the game, soft locking the entire lobby in place. The next one was in the clearing ad section. Clear them too fast, same problem, soft lock away. The final problem, and probably the most important one, was that if one player skipped the final cutscene, the biggest moment for a six month waiting period was gone, and players all lost the cutscene and didn't get quest progression or rewards. You have to think, if I'm running the mission, I'm getting five players that may not know what's going on, or players that just want to skip it in general. So if you don't have five players to play with, you're kind of praying for good luck. 
And trust me, it's a game online. There is going to be griefers to ruin this mission. How was this not thought of? Look, to top this all off, let's say a player disconnected, one of your friends, whatever. If they joined in progress, it would also bug the mission out too. Look, I understand bugs and all, but this mission feels like it was held onto by some string cheese to keep it together. So Bungie not only put out some warnings on Twitter on how to keep the mission running, but they also nerfed it to the point where you don't even have to play the mission anymore to get the story beats. First things first that needs to happen, there needs to be a news section in the game of Destiny. I cannot stress that enough. People should not have to go to Twitter. People should not have to go anywhere else to get updates. That's not me complaining. That is just a quality of life that is fair to everybody. Now, with the whole leveling thing, I could get it if this was new lights or free to play players in general, but this is a season ending mission. That means somebody has to own the season to even get in. I cannot comprehend going from 1270 to 1170. It didn't really change anything. Maybe it had light level matchmaking like Dares of Eternity, but again, seasonal mission. This isn't free to play, so players should be able to handle a 1270 mission, since that's not even the soft cap level in Destiny right now. Next. I didn't even do the mission and was confused on why I got all the story beats without the content. I got back from my trip, tried to be as spoiler free as possible, talked to Marasov and then Saint-14, and it was just confusing because I had heard of the mission, but my quest never said to do it. <sighs> Again, guys, I don't want to sound like I'm complaining all over the place, I really don't mean to. I get that stuff happens but I just want to enjoy the season finale without any interruptions this time. What do you think of all these bugs? Let me know. Hopefully in the Witch Queen, there's not a million bugs on missions, but you know, that's just unrealistic. Bugs are always going to happen. Anyways, now that YouTuber is done complaining, the story, cutscenes, closing thoughts, the whole shebang, let's talk about it. Alright, roll the cutscene. My brother spent years suffering punishment for the path you made him walk. Finally, justice finds its mark. <laughs> Thank you. Sabathun really is a giant moth, and that light coming out of the cocoon really did shine bright for her. Osiris was let free and alive, and Sabathun flew away to victory, getting ready for the Witch Queen. I really wanted to see her in the cutscene but she is a part of all the promotional material, so there's that. Queen Marasov was tricked by nobody's real surprise, and the Witch Queen flew away with the light. I think there's a good lesson in the mission though, both queens fighting for their own selfish gain, as Marasov had this evil grin on her face when talking about the Worm of Sabathun that we now have. Marasov, for those who don't know, is really never involved in the story for us, but instead for her own people the Awoken. Just like Savathun is really only in it for herself and her people too, being a nice parallel of characters if I'm being honest. For the Destiny community though, they're in it to bring out the lamps and fly swatters to kick some moth ass! And that's really the end of the season, a six month waiting period for something that felt like it fit in a three month wait. I think seeing the Witch Queen earlier than this cutscene may have led it to being less exciting like seeing Season 2 before Season 1 is over. But hey, it's just a simple little mission after all, and it'll be going away soon. 
I think that this one is just a very good example of players getting their hopes up for something that just wasn't all that crazy. So, let's do the thing. Let's, uh, let's, let's the cool music and, and wrap it. Yeah, wrap it up. Exorcism. A good example of the Destiny community's high expectations being brought down a peg, and the ultimate trick being played in the plot and in the ways of bugs. Destiny has seen its history of bugs in live events and wild moments in time, so this one is up there with the rest. Now, we will just have to wait for the Witch Queen to answer all of our questions and hopefully not have a teammate skip a cutscene. Anyways, thank you so much to everyone, and if you're watching this video, I am definitely live on Twitch right now playing the Witch Queen. So feel free to stop in and ask me questions and just hang out. Anyways everyone, enjoy some bloopers and have a great rest of your day. Mmm. Rushes. No, no copium rushes. No. <laughs> Any planets you'd like to see come back? Icicle, really? Really? I have never died to the icicle. Stand, dude. Yeah. <laughs> 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 my ass, 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 my